like to touch a little bit uh, in relation to the biomarkers of aging to the interventions. I will only give you two, two examples why I think that the biological clocks of, of the biomarkers of aging are leading towards certain interventions. And I will show you a couple of RCTs. So I will focus um, just for the last uh, three minutes on, on supplements. I did lots of studies on nicotinamide mononucleotide. You might have heard it. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, I see lots of uh, uh, photos here. It's, it's very funny. If we're talking about supplements, everybody makes a photograph. So hopefully you don't take NMN. You only should take NMN if you really need it, and then it might help. But um, nicotinamide mononucleotide is a, a supplement um, and very often uh, people take it because NED levels are going down with the chronological aging process and if it's going down then the mitochondria are not working well you have a higher risk of age-related diseases if that's causal or not we do not know but there's a huge amount of evidence that first of all something goes down and that's NED level and you can supplement it with NMN. So that's great. It's a little bit like um, you have a glucose level you're measuring and um, you give insulin. So it, it works quite well and I show you the data. We did a randomized control trial uh, for arms, giving NMN to healthy individuals, that's what I'm striving for to optimize them, at the age of 50 in just 60 days. So we had placebo, 300, 600, and 900. And you only sh uh, get here the, the clinically, I would say, meaningful outcome parameters. Uh, and that is the six-minute walking test and the blood age clock and the SF36, which is the quality of life uh, marker. But most importantly, and that was the primary outcome in this RCT, are NED levels going up? And yes, luckily. <laughs> so the NMN was good. At 300 and 600 and 900, the, inc the, the individuals who got it had a higher NED level. And what we also showed, but absolutely, look, this is a, a small randomized control trial, absolutely not powered, but a secondary outcome parameters, clinically meaningful parameters, a six minute walking test, and the SF36 was the best in the 600 milligram and was equal to the 900 milligram. So, which also means we need many more of these studies to see how much supplement you should give, because 300 was not enough, we think, um, because also if you look at NED level change, and that's on the left-hand side, you see there is an NED level increase, but not at much at 600. So we ask our, uh, the question in a post-hoc analysis, and think about the analogy of you giving uh, insulin and you're measuring glucose, and then seeing, of course, uh, hopefully a good result. Can we do the same with NED levels and, and NMN? And if with the hypothesis that we should increase NED levels, do the individuals, the participants, with a higher NED level increase, do they also have better clinically meaningful outcomes, like measured in a six-minute walking test and... Um, the SF36. And yes, it's, it's the case, especially you need at least roughly 50 nanomole per liter increase in NED level, and then you have potentially the highest chance of a clinically meaningful outcome parameter. So what does it mean? We are now going into an arena, like in normal medicine we should, would do, that we are titrating supplements based on an outcome we can measure. There are lots of problems with NED levels and how accurate they are and how reproducible they are, but this is the entire thinking now in health and longevity medicine to make it really evidence-based. Like we are manipulating the body with certain interventions and we want to know, with hopefully surrogate markers, that it, that it actually changed and there's a positive outcome parameter. And that's the reason why I'm really argumenting, do not just either take yourself supplements but measure first, know what you need, and don't prescribe it so much, like if you don't know what, what to do to, to clients. So we now do an accurate uh, study where we're really titrating NMN levels and any, uh, sorry, NED levels based on NMN and some other, other supplements. We do the same for alpha ketoglutarate. Um, it's, it seems that alpha ketoglutarate is uh, manipulating okay. epigenetics. So it, at least we know epigenetic changes occur after taking alpha ketoglutarate. So we do the ABLE study where we only select individuals who are 
epigenetically older using four clocks and using the median compared to the chronological age, we're giving for a couple of months one gram of alpha ketoglutarate, and at the primary outcome, again, we want to see that these clocks are sensitive to change and um, that the biological age is lower. This is the first trial really applying these epigenetic uh, clocks as a selective parameter, but also as a primary outcome. And we also now do that in um, studies where people undergo uh, major, major surgery. We are super interested in finding the best food on earth for individuals, also looking at the microbiome, uh, et cetera, and especially looking at what kind of food groups or foods are, have the most potential, for example, at senolytic, of being senolytic. Senescent cells accumulate, how do we get rid of them? And we do that for many other hallmarks of aging, just as an example. But I think it's exciting that we could manipulate the body just with food, which we already heard from the Zoe talk. So. Uh